Good morning. Welcome to Battle Branch, and just wanted to start off and see if we have anybody that's here for the very first time. Yar, raise your hand if you're here for the first time. All right, everybody been here before. Good to have everybody, no matter how you're worshiping with us today. Um, just wanted to let everybody know that the flowers, these beautiful flowers, are placed in memory of Geneva McCracken. And they sure are pretty. I guess that was probably... Well, she really loved flowers, didn't she? Um, there's prayer lists that are on the pews, and they're also at each exit, each of the two main exits anyway. Uh, so if you don't have one, you're welcome to get one as you go out. And if you have somebody that you'd like added to the prayer list, uh, contact Patty Cadell at 490-9533. And also, if you'd like to get an email version of the prayer list, uh, send an email to battlebranchbaptistchurch at gmail.com, and they will set you up to get them via email. Uh, do we have any birthdays this week? Daniel? Forest, I didn't. <laughs> Couldn't see the forest for the trees. <laughs> forest Bryson. Chad. Any more? All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Any anniversaries this week? Dennis and Jenny. <laughs> Any more? All right. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Uh, those that would like to join us in the choir, uh, we're going to sing out of the songs of faith this morning. So come up and help us if you will. It's me and you. <laughs>
Lord, and I do appreciate everyone being here. Thank God for you. Um, how great thou art. He is a wonderful God and a loving God. And, you know, I, I guess a lot of times we fail him in so many ways. But he's always there ready to forgive us. And, you know, you think about this. A lot of times we just get wrapped up in this life and we forget that one day we will stand before God and, and not, you know, some think, well, maybe I won't, but we will. Every single one of us will stand before God. And God has given us a book, which is the Bible, which is the Word of God, to follow and to live. And, and it shows us how God wants us to live. But then a lot of times we, it seems like that we get off track and go the way of the world. And I've thought a lot <clears throat> this week and last week about where our nation is and, and the way that it's going and seem like it's going farther and farther off track all the time. And I'm not standing up here uh, uh, preaching politics. I try to stay out of that. But it uh, does seem like that our nation is, is just going as far as it can after, after sin. And I believe that God wants his people to stand and stand true upon his word. Now, a lot of people think, well, if I do it and I don't see the chastening hand of God just right then, that it's okay. But it's not. It's what thus saith the word of God. It's what God tells us is how that we should live our life. Now, uh, over I, if you want to read with me, turn to Numbers chapter 22, and I'm going to try to read that in just a minute. But I've got just a couple of verses over in 2 Peter I want to read to you first. He's talking about the way of Balaam, and, and we know that Balaam... Uh, was at one time in his life serving God and then they offered him so much riches and everything that, that he went away from what the word of God said. God told him uh, uh, not to go up against his children, not to curse his people. And uh, Balaam heard God now, that was the word of God. That's what God said. A lot of people don't understand uh, about Balaam. Whenever they read that, they think, well, God changed his mind. No, God don't change his mind on his word. His word is it. And, and there's no way for me to live any other way if I'm going to receive what God has got for me and that's the peace that God offers that's eternal life that's uh, uh, all of the promises that God has promised me in his word um, I cannot and and there's no way that I can stay in the will of God if I go away from what thus saith the word of God no matter what the world is doing no matter what your neighbor's doing, no matter what somebody else that you know is doing, uh, if God says this is the way that it should be, that's the way that it should be. Now, uh, and I want you to look at this, God's word, and then God allows us to go in and live our life, and, and if we choose not to follow what God says, then... Uh, God will let that happen. Now, a lot of people don't understand that, and that's why that we get into uh, having problems a lot of times, um, uh, but, but that is the way that God does. Um, I, I've known so many lessons in my life that, that I know better, but I went ahead and done it anyway, and then there would be the chastening hand of God. I've told you one time I wanted a, a pickup, beautiful pickup, um, set up 
like a young man would want and uh, beautiful red. I mean, it was as pretty as it comes. Had big tires on it. And boy, I saw that and I wanted it. And, and it just didn't work out to start with, but I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing till I would got it. Now, God was showing me to start with that I didn't need that. And I think when I got it, it got eight miles a gallon and gas was high. Uh, so it sat in the yard all the time. And, and it was a great day when I got rid of that truck. I probably lost money on it. Uh, and, and then again, one day, I knew uh, and I know that God teaches me to pray and to seek God's will. I was working. Got up. Didn't have time to stop and pray. Got up wide open and took off to work and got over on the side of the mountain building a road. I had one piece of equipment. Had two men there with me and, and uh, got off in a big old hole and, and just was fought and trying my best to get out and trying to get out and trying to get out. Wallowed there a half a day. Finally, I just stopped. Went up into a laurel thicket and got down on my knees. And I tried everything I knowed. Cut blocks, drove, dozer was jacked up. Cut blocks, put under it, and it just kicked them out. Got on my knees. And you know what the first thing that come to my mind? The first thing, I forgot to talk to God when I left my house this morning. You see, God tells me in His Word that I should pray and seek His will, but so many times we all, I'm as guilty as anybody, we take off and we forget about God. But you know what happened when I got up in that laurel thicket and got on my knees? God said, okay, you forgot me this morning. And I said, God, will you help me? I couldn't hardly afford to pay my men. And, and surely I couldn't afford to leave that dozer there and, and lose all that time. I went back down there and I cut one block and put under the, the, the dozer and the tracks caught that thing and here it come right out. <laughs> it was just like the hand of God reached down and picked that thing up and set it out where Madison had been trying all day, all morning to get the, get the thing unstuck. I had done what Madison wanted to do. I didn't follow what the Word of God teaches me to do. Now, how many of us get into these fixes and we don't trust God? Now, this world uh, is, is, is heading in that direction every day. Uh, nation, I mean, there's history. Uh, the Bible's full of history. And, and there's, there is people after people after people, nation after nation after nation that forgot about the Word of God and what thus saith the Word of God went on their own way and was destroyed. Now, I want to talk to you about a man that was a prophet. And, and it shows that he was close to God at one time. And we think, well, if a man was close to God, he can't, he can't get away from God? Why, sure he can. Uh, Balaam was close to God at one time. When he went to God, God heard him, and it didn't take uh, ten years for God to answer. God heard him. But now I want to read to you what, what the Bible says, and I'm going to turn back over there just a second. He said that, that we, having eyes full of adultery. Now look at where this world is going. It's going just as fast as it can after sin. He says, having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and a heart they have exercised with covetous practice, cursed children. And he goes on, which have forsaken the right way. The right way. What is the right way? It is God's word. What thus saith the word of God. Now we might think, well, I've done this and I've done that and God cannot forgive me. Well, God can forgive us. Uh, we have seen in the Bible where Jesus 
was walking and, and, and preaching and we see the man that was possessed with demons that, that uh, Jesus come by and he uh, 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 prayed and the demons come out of him. Uh, we see the woman at the well that was caught uh, in, in sin. And what did Jesus tell all these things? He said, your sins are forgiven. He said, go and sin no more. Now, we can be forgiven, we can walk in the will of God, and we can have the blessings of God in our hearts and in our lives, but we have got to trust what God says. He said, which have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Buzor, who lived the wages, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. There was a donkey that had to preach to this prophet, and we've all studied that and read that and heard about it, but I want to show you and go back over here. Now, God's Word, this is what I want you to, to listen to and to hear today. God's Word tells us how to live our life. God gives us the choice whether I choose to live what God says or I choose my way. Now, what are we going to do? I give you uh, two, two examples in my life how that I wanted something, but God knew that I didn't need this, uh, how that uh, I, I left without seeking God's will, got in trouble. Time and time again, these things have happened in my life. And, and God, if we seek God, then God shows us what we need to be doing and how we need to be walk, uh, living our life and walking before God. And, and then we can receive the blessings of God. So here was a man that was close to God. But then all of a sudden, they, he was shown all of this glory and all the wealth that he could get. And he chose that over God. And, and look how far this man got out. Numbers 22, verse 1. The children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side Jordan by Jericho. Now, uh, over the, uh, the, the Bible said that they, they were just like uh, the, the sand of the sea. They were scattered everywhere. Now, here, uh, Balak, whenever he heard of this, it was right next to his country. Now, uh, Balaam was about either, it was close to four or five hundred miles away from Balaam. It's where Balak lived. Four or five hundred miles. And in that day, you rode a donkey, or you walked, or uh, that was your uh, way of getting from one place to the other. So Balaam had heard about this prophet, that whenever he prayed, that God heard. So when Balaam looked out and he saw all the children of Israel uh, in their tents scattered out all over the plains, and he seen all these people, and he had heard about that, these uh, uh, people that God had been with them and everywhere they went, they destroyed the people. Now, have you ever wondered why God allowed the children of Israel to go into these countries and destroy all these people? You ever wondered that? I did. I, I couldn't understand it as I was reading the scriptures. And I prayed and I said, God, I, I just don't understand. Why, why would you allow the, your people to go and kill all of these people and take their land and, and what they have. Why? If you'll study, you'll see where these people, they had a choice to live for God or to choose the ways of the world. And, and these people chose the ways of the world. So God allowed his children to come in and, and possess their lands and take their lands. But do you know what God said? He said, now when you go in and you destroy, he said, you destroy all of them. He said, don't you take their women for your wives. 
He said, don't you take their men for your uh, uh, husbands. Now, why did God tell them that? Because of what they had been taught and the ways that they lived and their, uh, uh, the, the things that they worshipped. God did not want that brought into his people and pollute their ways. You're living on land today that uh, the Indians used to roam. We're all living on that land today. And why did God allow that? I mean, we've all read about the, the trail of tears and, and how pitiful those folks were treated. Well, if you'll study back, they got to worshiping everything else. And if America does not turn back to God, it's not going to be good for us either. Now you say, Madison, that, that puts fear in my heart. Well, let me tell you something. We can do something about it. You can do something about it. How can I do something? By looking into the Word of God and seeing what God tells us and how to, to live our life and to keep sin out of our life. You say, well, Madison, I'm a babe in Christ. I'm saved, but I don't know all the Scripture. I want to tell you this. I knew none of the scripture when I got saved. I did not know the, the word uh, to find the word Jesus in the Bible, but I knew that there was a Jesus. I knew that uh, after I was saved uh, that, that things were sin and I needed not to do them again. How did I know they were sin? Because the Holy Spirit of God come and took up his abode inside me and lived inside me. And the Spirit of God would speak and guide us. And you say, I, I don't understand how he speaks. I want to tell you, he'll speak to our heart. And the best illustration I know to give to you, you take two magnets and you turn them the right way and they'll go together. You turn them the wrong way and they'll push apart. And that's the way that our spirit will do to us if we're a child of God if something is not right in the eyes of God, it'll, it'll, our, our spirit will push away. And it'll say, tell us, this is not right. This is not right. But I want to tell you something. There's not a one of us that will not stand before God. Now why do we need to go through life and not receive the fellowship of God and the goodness that God has got for us? The peace. The peace in your heart that God can give to you. Uh, uh, but as we go on down through here, and I'm going to try not to be long-winded today. Uh, uh, I appreciate you coming. I appreciate you coming in the rain and being here. But I want you to see uh, the things of God. But anyway, I'll, I'll jump on down. Uh, but he went on down and he sent uh, uh, here to, to uh, Balak had sent to uh, try to get Balaam to come. Four or five hundred miles away. He took the, 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 his men and took uh, presents and wealth and all. And he went over, or they went to uh, Balaam. And they told him, said, Balaam, said, well, uh, uh, our king Balak wants you to come and put a curse upon these people because they're right next door to our land and they're going to come in and destroy us all. So here now, I want you to see God's direct will. God's will. This is what God said. And God said to Balaam, this is found in verse 12 of chapter 22, and God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. God said, these are my people. said, Balaam, you shall not go with them. That was God's direct word. Me and you have God's word before us. God says you must be born again to get to heaven. God said to uh, uh, the Gadarene, whenever he was saved, he said, don't, don't go and sin. The Gadarene, he wanted to go with Jesus. Walk with him, wanted to be with him. He said, no. He said, you return home and show what great things God's done for you. The one he said, go and sin no more. Uh, and God is go and sin no more. God's direct 
will. Now, we have choices. Let's go on down. Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the prince of Balak, Get thou into your land, for the Lord refuseth to give me leave to go with you. Now he stood, stood firm. But now I want you to look what Satan does. Satan tempts us, and then he just keeps on a little more and a little more and a little more. And the prince of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balak and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. Now remember, four or five hundred miles, if they traveled, it would take them close to 20 to 22 days to travel that on foot. So there they went, 20 something days back, and then here he goes again. He sent yet again princesses more and more honorable than they. He sent some more important people. Now this is about 40 something days. Balak, uh, or Balaam was there and about 40 something days later here comes some more that was more uh, uh, honorable than the ones that come before. And they came to Balaam and said unto him, Thus saith Balak, the son of Zippor, let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me. He said, I want you to come over here and put a curse on these people because they're coming in to destroy us. Now, these were the children of, of God. If you're a child of God and you're living for God, how many times do you imagine that God has kept Satan off your back? How many times has, a, has the hand of God been around you how many times has them angels hovered around you and took care of you? Uh, and God is telling me and you to live for him and to serve him. He said, I will promote thee unto a very great honor, and I will do whatsoever thou saith unto me. Come, therefore, I pray thee, and curse this people. Balaam answered and said unto the servant of Balak, If, now he see, he was, he was really uh, uh, trying to stand but he said, if Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord and my God to bless or more. Now he, he stood, but then he's seen all of these big famous people. Now, folks, what do we do when we get around the famous? Do we still stand for God? I mean... God is watching. God is listening. Do we stand for him all the time? Now, therefore, I pray you, Terry, here he is weakening down. He's getting a little weaker because he's seen all this fame and wealth. He's giving in. I pray you, Terry, here this night that I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. Now, back up here in verse 12, was what God said. God had said, he said, do, he said, Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. He said, You leave my people alone. He said, They're blessed. Do not bother them. Now that was God's direct will. But God allows things to happen. God allowed Madison to jump over God's will and get something that he couldn't afford to drive. God allowed Madison's dozer to be stuck in a place that he couldn't get it out because he did not listen to God. God has allowed many things in our life to happen to try to open up our eyes. Now, God had told him, and God came now. It, this is where God just says, okay, I'll let you go on and and you'll, you'll reap what you sow. Now here in verse 20, he's saying, God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, arise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto you, thee thou shalt do. Now God had told Balaam, and, and Balaam's foot got mashed, and his leg got mashed, 
And if he had listened to God, he did not went through all this pain. He got he he went on and and he was so far out of the will of God, even the donkey that he was riding, the Bible goes on and it says that that uh, there was an angel standing with a sword in a narrow place, and and here Balaam come down through there, uh, spiritually blind. The donkey had more sense than the prophet, and the donkey saw the angel with the sword, and it run Balaam into the wall and and messed his foot up. Then he run him into the other side, messed his leg up, and and the donkey got to talking. To Balaam. Balaam said, he said, he said, I should have, he said, if I'd have had my sword, he said, I'd have cut your throat. I'd have killed you right here. And the donkey told him, he said, why? He said, why? He said, I've been faithful to you all this time. And what he did, the donkey had saved his life because the angel was standing out there with a sword. And then God opened up his eyes. So people, I want to tell you something today. There's the will of God, what God wants. God wants every single one of us saved. God wants you saved. And then God allows us to go across that line. God allows us. You say, Madison, I've been down that road. I'm in that road now. I'm stuck now. I'm in trouble now. Well, let me tell you what you can do. You can come as the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart and kneel in this altar, and you can get things fixed just exactly right with God. And God can put peace. God said he'd forgive us. God has promised to forgive us of everything that we've done out of the will of God. God's promised us for everything except blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. And I've studied and studied on that, and the best I can come up with what that means is that whenever we keep telling him no, 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 our heart will get so hard that God will not speak to us. So think about this today. Think about as God has opened up your heart, and think about the Holy Spirit shining that light into your soul right now. And God's speaking to you, and God knows the need that's in every one of our lives. There's no need for the wrath of God to be upon our lives, none whatsoever. When God is offering to us forgiveness of where we failed Him. Now, God's will, we know what's right. We know what God's will is. So what about it today? I'm going to ask you to stand. And if He spoke to your heart for any reason, any reason whatsoever, will you come and talk to God here today? Will you? What about it? And they didn't think of eternity as the soldier. Anyone today got a name? If you do, will you come will right now? We learn from you know, I believe that done. God gave me this, we'll and there's a reason. And if you've got a need today, you ought to come and let's talk to the Lord. What about it? Tell me which one. Anyone, anywhere. You take, I'll take Jesus. What are you going to take? take What are you going to take? Cause I've tried those earthly pleasures. And they fail. And when you see, why don't you come on right now as these are coming? I'm going to take Jesus. What are you going to take? What about it? Now, me or the world, my child. Now, which one will you take? Everybody, bow your head if you will. If God spoke now to you, why don't you step out right now and come? We're going to pray in just a minute. If there's any others, away. will you come? The greatest deeds that I have done, they won't I want to say to these that's bowed in the altar or anybody day. in the church, anywhere, 
And if you've never been saved, <clears throat> lift your hand up. I want to pray with you. If there's one anywhere. God knows every one of our hearts, so let's all pray. Our Father, we humbly bow before thy throne today. We thank you, God, for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for the love that you have given to us. Thank you, God, for the forgiveness that you've given us to where we have failed you. God, help us to walk faithful before you and to live a life that would please you. I thank you, God, for everything that you've done for me. I thank you for saving me, and I thank you, God, for just being with me so many times. God, give me the strength to walk faithful according to your word and live a life that pleases you. And God, I know that I'll have peace in my heart and soul. And I pray for peace for everyone that hears my voice today. God, that they could have that pure peace in their heart. And God, when our sins are forgiven, we have that. So I thank you for it today. And I thank you for what you've done here today. And God, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for everything. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I appreciate everyone coming today. Appreciate you listening at home or wherever you may be. Thank God for you. And uh, you're free to go. So thank you for coming.